Welcome to the next video in the search for better health topic. This video is going to be looking at syllabus.9.4.22. Explain why cleanliness in food, water and personal hygiene practices assist in the control of disease. So we're going to start off by looking at food preparation. So food poisoning is on the increase in modern society. So people are heavily relying on takeaway rather than cooking healthy food themselves and a lot of these takeaway venues aren't practicing safe uh, food handling techniques. Obviously now there's a lot more regulation being put on uh, restaurants, fast food outlets, even school canteens to make sure that they're meeting particular standards for the cleanliness of the of the actual facility as well as the particular practices that the people that work there undertake. So poor food handling and hygiene contribute to the rapid multiplication of bacteria that causes food poisoning. So salmonella we know is one of the bacterial uh, sort of individual types of bacteria that causes food poisoning and salmonella reproduces extremely quickly in the right kind of environment. So when temperatures are between five degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius, these bacteria can reproduce extremely quickly. So that's why food needs to be stored below four degrees Celsius in a refrigerator, or when it is cooked, it needs to make, we need to make sure that before food is served, that the temperature is checked to ensure that the temperature has risen above 60 degrees Celsius throughout the whole um, food in order to get rid of that bacteria. Also, if food is laying out, then there's adequate time. The bacteria can reproduce from one individual uh, bacteria to over 2 million bacteria in just eight hours. So that's why places like McDonald's have the times on a lot of their food so that the food can only be on the shelf for a certain period of time before it needs to be disposed of in order to reduce this bacteria growth. Food obviously contains nutrients such as eggs, dairy, meat and fish, which the bacteria can feed on uh, and then obviously allow them to multiply. And a moist environment can also help to increase the speed at which bacteria reproduce. So that's, uh, uh, so sorry, food places need to ensure that their surfaces are dry, that after they've washed up particular things that they dry them properly to make sure that uh, this moist environment isn't there to aid that bacterial growth. So in order to overcome these things during food preparation, you should obviously wash your hands very thoroughly before you start food preparation. You should even wash your hands. Uh, so if you're cooking at home and you're uh, chopping up vegetables and then you're um, cutting up some some fresh chicken, then you go back and cut up some more vegetables, you should actually be washing your hands in between each of the different food types that you touch because there's different pathogens on each of the different foodstuffs. So you can be transferring those pathogens in bet uh, between the different foods. Obviously, if you have any broken skin, you need to cover that with a Band-Aid. And for anybody that works at McDonald's, you know that you've got those blue Band-Aids that are very visible if they come off need to make sure that cooking utensils, cutlery, uh, cookware are all cleaned very thoroughly. So usually put through dishwashers where the temperature reaches quite high, about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, which as we know helps to kill that bacteria. You should never touch your face, your skin, your hair, and then touch food without washing in between. You should always wash all fresh produce, so fruits and vegetables. You should try to keep uh, different uh, foodstuffs on different chopping boards. So you should have a chopping board for your vegetables, a chopping board for your chicken, chopping board for red meat, because again, those pathogens can be transferred between each of those different foodstuffs. Fresh food should be kept in the refrigerator at four degrees or below in order to stop food reaching that temperature where bacteria grows. And you should ensure that the cooking temperature is reached and that the food is cooked thoroughly before it is served. So what about clean water? So water is a good environment for growth of disease causing microbes because as we said in the previous part that a moist environment is great for bacteria. So many of the bacteria or the other microbes that cause disease are not visible without the microscope and they can 
be present in our water supply and us not even know about it. So drinking water provides these microbes with easy access to our internal structures. So if they're microscopic, you get a glass of water, you can't tell whether there's any microbes in there because the water looks clear, uh, it doesn't smell funny, you drink it and those microbes then enter your body. The temperature, the environment, all those things are then optimal for bacterial growth and they basically have a field day. The great thing is in Australia and Sydney in particular is that the water that arrives to our house via the water supply is hopefully already clean because it goes through a number of very strict procedures and processes such as filtration and the addition of chlorine in order to kill off as many of those bacterial uh, organisms as possible. We did have an outbreak back in 1998 of uh, Cryptosporidium and Giardia and quite a large uh, population of people in Sydney got sick from um, an outbreak in our Sydney water, but we'll be having a look at that in class. So personal hygiene, hopefully this is just a little bit of common sense. So personal hygiene is important to maintain your health and obviously to pre prevent you from getting diseases. Soap, detergents and disinfectants can help you to do this. And we'll be having a look at um, these a little bit later as well, in particular antibacterials and things and the positives and negatives behind them. Dental hygiene obviously keeps the bacteria that's present in your mouth under control. So we have normal bacteria on the surface of our skin and in our mouth. So we need those to help balance the good and the bad bacteria. So by brushing, flossing, using mouthwash, you're keeping the bad bacteria at bay, but not necessarily getting rid of too much of the good bacteria. And obviously washing your hands, reducing the risk of infection when you're touching any surfaces, food, and then touching your skin, etc. So why do these three things work? There are a huge number of disease-causing organisms everywhere around us. Every surface that you touch, somebody else has touched that's potentially carrying a disease, especially in public toilets, on public transport. At school, you can imagine all the surfaces that you touch at school that other grotty little kids have touched that haven't washed their hands, your keyboard, your steering wheel in the car. Some of these places are the biggest harbourers or biggest populations of dis of uh bacteria and things uh, on things such as your keyboard, your mobile phone screen. So you touch your skin, you touch your hair, and then you get and play your phone and you don't wash your hand in between. So just imagine all those microscopic little organisms that are living on the surface of your phone and on your keyboard. So because most of them are microscopic, they can enter our body through basically any body opening. The opening doesn't have to be very big. So just a tiny little paper cut is a big enough opening for these pathogens to enter. Eating food and drinking water is obviously an easy way for these microbes to get into our body. So therefore we have to minimize um, the microbes that are in the food and water and on our skin in order to reduce the risk of infection. So good personal hygiene ensures that these body openings, so if you do have a cut, washing it, using antibacterial, using a Band-Aid, so it stops a number of microbes that are able to get in. Okay, then once they get in, our body has a number of different defense systems that we'll be looking at in order to try to keep those microbe levels low. So since we can't see the individual microbes, we need to take a number of precautions or as many precautions as we can in order to protect us to stop those microbes from getting in in the first place. And then that brings us to this, the end of this video. So thank you for watching.